If we want to compare two data sets within the same context, we can either plot both bar charts on the same graph, such as the one you can see here, or plot a composite bar chart. So the following bar chart here shows the favourite school subjects of pupils in class 10A and class 10B. So you can see that from the key. From that, we can draw some conclusions. For example, if we look at this section of the bar chart here, the blue bar, which represents class 10B, is significantly larger. So you could say that maths is more popular in class 10B. And maths is more popular in class 10B. What other conclusions could we make? Well, of course, you could do a similar thing for English. You could say English is more popular in class 10B. Or we could look at this bit and we could say history is more popular in class 10A because the green bar is longer and so on. So when it's represented like this side by side, it's relatively easy because you just choose whichever bar is taller or shorter depending on the context. For example, if this was test scores, um, you would want longer bars and those people would perform better. So you could just say this bar is longer, therefore they, they perform better in the test. In this context, it's to do with favourite subjects. So the longer bar represents more people choosing that as their favourite. Composite bar charts are another way of displaying more than one data set within the same context. Instead of the bars being side by side, they are stacked on top of each other. For example, the bar chart below shows the number of sales at a closed shop per day for both jeans and t-shirts. So you can see which is which using the key. The jeans is the blue and the t-shirt is this orangey brown. What conclusions can we make? Well, reading off the t-shirts, because it's the bit on the bottom of the composite bar chart, is as straightforward as just reading a normal bar chart. It starts at zero and then this bar finishes at 21. So we know on Monday there were 21 t-shirts sold. Reading off the number of jeans is a little bit trickier because you need to figure out where the bar starts and where it ends and then figure out the difference between the two. We know that this ends at 21. Well, where it starts at 21, the t-shirt ends at 21. And then the jeans ends at 29. So this must be eight jeans. So we can see as a conclusion, more t-shirts were sold on Monday. And you can back this up with some numbers. 21 t-shirts were sold versus eight pairs of jeans. And of course, with this, you can, for most of them, see straight away which one represents more sales. So like looking at Tuesday, you can see that the blue section is clearly bigger than this section, so more jeans were sold on Tuesday. Looking at the bar for Wednesday, well the t-shirt section, the orangey brown, is clearly a lot bigger than the blue section, which represents jeans, so there was more t-shirts sold that day. This one, it's not as obvious, but if you looked at it, you can work out or you can read off the scale that more t-shirts were sold. And then the final one, the jeans bar, is significantly larger than the t-shirt section, so more jeans were sold on that day. If you found this video useful, why not try the topic exam on our learning platform? Here you can answer a series of questions and get instant feedback on how you've done, both in a written solution format and a video solution format. So you can see here, I got this question right, so I can just quickly read the written solution just to make sure I did it the right way. Whereas this one, I got wrong, so I can view the video solution where an expert will talk me through exactly how I should have done it.